Hello Kentucky Disciples, I'm Dean Phelps, your Transitional Regional Minister. My undergraduate studies were in music and mathematics. Uh, yes, mathematics as a prelude to, to ministry. I am one of those people who will tell you that much of the beauty of the world lies in calculus. And folks have heard me say on several occasions that the purpose of statistics is to tell you the probability that you're wrong. Mathematics. Uh, I understand counting things. And if you're really bored sometime, we can sit down over a cup of coffee and talk about the algebra behind that set of numbers that we use to, to count things. I, I understand uh, counting things, and, and the church has a bent uh, towards counting. Uh, we count people. We count dollars. Every statistic that we report to the yearbook and directory, it seems like, has to do with, with counting something. How many uh, people attend worship? How many members do you have? How many dollars have you received in offerings? How many dollars have you given away for a Disciples Mission Fund or, or other uh, kind of outreach and, and ministry efforts. You know, how much have you received? How much uh, are you investing? It's, it's been interesting that uh, during this pandemic time, when we've been really creative about how we gather for worship, we're finding ways to gather and worship together uh, even without being in the same room. And one of the interesting questions that has come up was how do we report worship attendance on Facebook Live. Uh, what does number of views really mean? How many people does that represent? And those are good questions to ask because numbers never really stand by themselves. We, we always ought to ask what a number means. Counting in and of itself is, is not necessarily a, a bad thing. The information that we get from counting, uh, when used and understood correctly, uh, can tell us a story, can tell a story about our work, our, our lives, our community, and even our church. During this pandemic, we've been counting. We've counted the daily number of new cases. Sadly, we've counted the daily number of deaths from COVID-19. We count the number of positive tests against the number of tests that, that have been given and used and understood correctly. Those numbers tell a story. Right now, those numbers are, are telling the story that we have done good work in loving our neighbor. We have done good work in keeping people safe and healthy and the story is now telling us we need to redouble those efforts. We need to, to ramp up that love and, and that protection. We learn that from counting and understanding what we count well. We count people. We count dollars. We even count days, hours, weeks, and, and years. We count to ask how much. We count to ask how long, even how much should I put up with, and how long can this go on? There's a story in Matthew's Gospel where Peter comes to Jesus and he seems to want to count. He asks Jesus, if a member of the church sins against me, how many times should I forgive them? Seven times? And seven seems like a reasonable number to, to put out there. Seven is a, a number of completion. As, as we read scripture, we, we encounter seven. A set of seven is something that's whole or complete. So for Peter, not necessarily to make up this number, but to say, uh, how many times is enough? What will make forgiveness complete? Uh, seven times? Almost as though, you know, if I just kind of keep the check marks... And when I get to seven, uh, I've done my job. And Jesus says, no. Take your seven and multiply it by a multiple of seven. Not seven times, but 70 times seven times. 
And I don't think Jesus is, is playing into the game of we need to count things by just giving a bigger number. I, I don't think Jesus is trying to say here, no, not seven times, uh, 490 times. I think Jesus in a first century New Testament kind of way is saying your forgiveness needs to be large enough that you lose count. How many times should I forgive? Enough that I've forgotten how many times I've forgiven. I think in Jesus in a New Testament first century kind of way is talking about forgiveness that needs to be exponential, that needs to be ever-growing. Forgiveness that moves into that wonderful mathematical mystery of infinity. It needs to be ever-growing. It needs to be something that we just can't count. Let your love, let your forgiveness be ever-growing. Let it be exponential, just like God's love for us and God's forgiveness of us is ever-growing. There's a wideness in God's mercy like the wideness of the sea. I know that my need for forgiveness goes beyond counting. Sometimes it seems like every day, every hour, within minutes, something I need to be forgiven for. I'm grateful that God's forgiveness goes beyond counting. And I pray that my love, that my capacity for forgiveness might be ever growing, that I won't try to keep score, that, that love and mercy and forgiveness for me will not be something that I try to count. I pray that our love for our neighbors, in whatever form that takes, will be ever growing, can be exponential, just like God's love for us. Let us love our neighbor in ways that we can't count, in ways that always grow, and maybe even in ways that are infinite.
pray with me? Gracious and loving God, God of infinite love and grace and mercy, we come giving you thanks, knowing that our need for forgiveness can be as wide and as ongoing as the sea. That our need for forgiveness can be like the grains of sand, impossible to count. And God, we give you thanks that your grace and your forgiveness is infinite. God, we pray that we would not only receive that love, not only receive that grace, but that our capacity to love and our capacity to forgive might grow continually, might become larger, might grow beyond our ability to count, that we might love our neighbor, that we might love others, even as you have loved us. Forgive us our sins, even as we forgive those who sin against us. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.